the most important thing to remember when you do any of this stuff is but one of my favorite things to do with this material is this and a thing to tell you about super bass actually Hi everybody, today I thought it'd be really fun to do a deep dive into this phase paint that I made a couple of years ago and show you all the amazing things that you can do with it. Let's take a look what you get in the box. So, first of all, this is a kit. This isn't just one paint, this is a kit. Inside you get a bottle of Super Base. Um, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. You also get the instruction card. Please read the instruction card and follow what it says. It really will help you get the best result out of what we make. And then the all-powerful, awesome phase pigment. And this changes colour in different temperatures. So it will change from this, which we call haze or purple haze, into the pinkest pink when it gets warm. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Now, we also have da, 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 the magic little stirrer, which is really useful. So that's what you get inside the kit. Let's take a little look at the first thing, which is Super Base. Now, Super Base comes in a couple of sizes. In the phase kit, I give it to you in 100 millilitres. That is plenty. You'll be able to cover about metre and a half square at least with that if you're careful with it or if you've got some super base lying around in the larger size it's the same stuff um, so you can use that uh, thing to tell you about super base actually is despite what you all think and you you ask me about this all the time despite what you think this isn't a primer this isn't to seal a canvas. This isn't like a background layer. It's not gesso or like a base you're painting. It's a paint base that you can mix color or pigment into to make your own paints. You can mix any of my powders or lit or whatever into this to turn it into an acrylic paint. And the super base really is the special ingredient in most of the paints I make. This very, very super special acrylic base is like no other base out there. It can hold more pigment than any other paint, than, than any other base, and it dries very flat and very, very matte, and that's why I like it. So let's pour some out. And the last thing with Super Base that really matters is shake it really, really, really well before you use it. Right, shall we make a magic colour changing potion together? The other ingredient you need is a little bit of water. This is just normal water from the tap, okay. Let's take a little look at how we do this. Now, have you ever made um, really posh hot chocolate before? The way you do, oh, look at the colour first of all. How phenomenally deep and rich is that? I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but wow, wow, look at that. So I'm gonna take one generous scoop of this. Look at that. And you can see it must be cold in here because of the color that this is. Look at that, it's so vibrant. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of water, just a couple of drops to get it started. And like I was saying, if you've ever made posh hot chocolate before, you normally mix it into a paste, don't you, before you add the milk. It's more like cooking than anything else. Now, I know what you're gonna say, how much water do I add, Stuart? How many milliliters? How many, you know, give me a measurement. This isn't like that. You need to be a little bit intuitive here. All you're trying to do is get it into a little bit of a paste where it's not too lumpy and bumpy. And that's why I've given you this little uh, spatula thing to use as well. It's a really great thing to mix it with. Now, you'll know when you've done it because all the lumpy bumpy bits will get mixed into, into the liquid and you won't have any little weird bits and bobs left over. And it takes a little while, you've got to be patient. Now, now what you've done, actually here um, is you've almost made a dye and we're going to use this dye to dye our base our paint base to make an acrylic and then i like the idea of you turning this stone i've got here into a color changing stone because i think that will be a good way to demonstrate the amazing power of this phenomenal material. Okay, now that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So it's gonna be time now for the super base. Now, 
General rule of thumb, think about 10 things. 10 things. One of the things is the pigment and nine of the things is the base. So nine to one is the ratio. So if we've had one spoonful of pigment, we want nine spoonfuls of base. But feel free to do whatever you want. There are no rules in, uh, in art, or at least there shouldn't be. That's one. So now we have nine bases and one part of the watery mixture, which I'm calling a dye from now on because I'm a geek. And then we're going to mix that together. And what you want to do is obviously make sure that the paint you're making is consistent. You don't want it to be streaky or runny or you know, look like some sort of weird icing or toothpaste or something. You want it to be a really nice paint. Now, if you want it to be a bit thicker, use less water and more base. If you want it to be more opaque, stronger, use more powder. I deliberately make these things as a kit so that you can do whatever you want with your paint because I like the idea that you can have your paint your way. I don't want it to be locked into some formulation that quite often some strange chemist has worked out for a paint company. They're not normally even artists that develop these things that we get to use. So I want to give you that power because nobody knows your art and what you want to express like you do. Okay, so we've now made a paint. Beautiful. And you can tweak it however you want, as you say, but this is my go-to formulation. I like it, it stays on my brush, it's not too runny, it's not like an ink, it is a paint. And I thought it would be great if we painted this stone. So this stone is quite a strange surface, so I imagine my first layer will be more of a sealing coat, just to seal it off. Um, and we'll build up a few layers. Obviously, if you were doing this um, properly, you might give it a base coat of gesso or something, but I'm just demoing it here for you. Look at it, it's really soaking in. I think it's more porous than I thought. Hopefully, hopefully a couple of coats and we'll be able to build it up. But uh, let's, um, while we're here, swatch it out on a piece of paper because I think it's always really nice to see that. Again, it's quite watery, that mixture I've made. I think I, think I might have made it a bit too watery. Um, that's not ideal. I think I, think I must have uh, put a bit too much water in when I mixed the pigment, but that's all right. We'll build up a few layers. You can get a much better finish than this out of it. This isn't the best demo, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're gonna get the idea of how to do it. And I'm urging you to experiment anyway. So that's that. I'll uh, paint a little canvas just for fun. I mean, obviously you can see, look how wishy-washy that is. Honestly, it's not normally like this. It's normally a lot more solid, but don't worry. We'll put it down anyway. Just have to build up a couple of coats and I don't mind that. And then we will see the magic happen when it starts to change color, when it gets warm. Let's let all of that dry and then give it another coat. So while I was waiting for that to dry, I was a little bit annoyed that that was all a bit wishy-washy. So I've actually mixed up a much more potent version here. The uh, powder to base ratio is much higher. So hopefully we'll get something a bit more opaque for our second layer. We'll see how that goes on. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what I was expecting to see. That's how it normally behaves. Basically exactly like an acrylic paint. And then you get to work with it just like you would uh, ordinarily with an acrylic paint. So yeah, I don't know. I think I just put a little bit too much water in there. My advice is to use hardly any water, just the tiniest little drop. I was, I was a little bit, a little bit excessive, a little bit overexcited maybe to show you this amazing paint and what it does. Cause you're not going to believe it when you see what it does, it's phenomenal. So let's build up a second layer on our magic color changing stone. I might even put some eyes and a little mouth on it and then have a little pet rock in the studio. Be quite nice, wouldn't it? We, maybe we could bring back pet rocks. Okay, so that's that's now had a, we could say a second coat, but really a first coat, because that 
first one was very thin, almost just like a ceiling layer, wasn't it? Let's have a look at it on the paper. There you go. Actual paint rather than uh, some streaky mess. So that's good. I can't wait to show you it change colour. I love it. It just just seeing this turn from this colour to the pinkest pink is really, really exciting. Let's give that a bit of a brush over. Still a bit streaky, but that'd be all right. And now we'll go on our uh, canvas. I might just give that a little smooth over with a soft brush. See what I'm doing, by the way? I'm just using the soft, bigger soft brush just to flatten out some of those brush marks that I've been getting. Let's let it dry and then we'll do a third coat. We're just gonna keep building up layers. The most important thing to remember when you do any of this stuff is whatever you do, build up lots of thin layers and let them dry properly between them. There is no time to be impatient when you do this. It just makes things worse. So be patient with it, build up your layers slowly, let them dry, thin is best. Let's uh, see how they've come out. Okay, so third and final layer going in on these now. I'm really liking this stone. I'm getting quite attached to it. Can you see um, how flat and powdery it's drying as well? That's exactly what this uh, base does and that's why I love it because it gives me that super flat, ultra matte, really pigmented paint effect that I love so much. And uh, that's thanks to the base. You can see it. And when it dries, it just looks fantastic. Yeah, can you see how nicely that third layer is going on? It's much more solid, isn't it? That's what we wanted to see. Nice, solid third layer. I wouldn't even count that first layer, really. It just sort of sealed the surface. It was really too thin. I did a, did a lousy job on that. So there you go, second coat. And then we'll do our little canvas as well for fun, I think. And again, you can see that third coat's going on really, really nicely. Okay, so they're completely dry. We're gonna have some fun and see what this awesome stuff does. Now let's start off by looking at the swatch on the paper. Now if I heat it up with my finger for a little bit, you will see it turns pink. Isn't that amazing? So that's because the blue tone in the pigment is becoming invisible or transparent when it gets warm. So there's so much fun you can have with just that in your work. You can think about things that people touch or hold, kinetic things, mood things. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I use my favorite tool, which is of course the hairdryer. Okay, so are you ready? Check this out. Whoa, look at that! How amazing is that? And now it will cool. And as it cools, it will go back to being purple, just like that one did. But one of my favorite things to do with this material is this, and I'm so excited to show you this. This is unbelievable. So I'm gonna pop it here. Now in here, while we were waiting for it to dry, I took the liberty of boiling the kettle. I now have some really hot water in here. Are you ready? This is beautiful. Watch this. How cool is that? Isn't it amazing? So you can have a good think about how you might want to use that in your own work. And it maybe inspires you to have a piece of work that's different in different settings. Now, a couple of things to remember. Don't leave this in the sunshine. It doesn't like it. It's gonna die if you leave it out in the sun for too long. And don't make it really cold either. Don't put it in the fridge or anything silly like that. If you look after it, it will happen loads and loads and loads of times. You can see the stone is already going back to being purple and the canvas is almost purple already. So it's an amazing color change effect. You can have so much fun making different paints with this. You can even add different color pigments to it to make it two different stuff. Anyway, that's my deep dive into phase. Have fun with it. Show me what you make with it. I can't wait to see all the amazing ideas you've got and I'll see you next time. Bye.